Here's what to expect when you've decided to sell your Magic the Gathering collection. Hi everyone and welcome back. MTG Moxman here. If you're new to the channel and you've just found me in the Nacho Cheese universe of YouTube, thanks for hanging out with me today and making it past the 30 second intro. You guys rock. For all my regular viewers, you already know you rock. Welcome back. I hope you had an awesome day in the world of magic wherever you are in the world. So serious topic today, everyone. For whatever reason, you've decided to sell some of your magic collection and you got to make cold cash, man. You got my, no trade in here. No trading. This is pure cash. I'm going to give you guys some of the things I have gone through and some of the situations I've been up against when selling sealed product and my singles for actual cash, okay? The pros, the cons, different platforms, different situations. These are all taken from stuff I've already done. So you can take it as pretty much, yeah, this is what happened to me. Fact. <laughs> okay? If you have any questions at the end of the video, make sure to leave those in the comment section. If you want it privately, of course, you can hit me up on my email. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button already. So let's get this one done. Sealed product today. We are selling a box of cons for $350 Canadian. Prices are in Canadian today. Dominaria, $350 Canadian. And for those who didn't know, $350 Canadian, you're saving like 30 cents on the dollar, okay? So about $700 Canadian is what we're hoping to get for our two boxes. Over here, we got the Gold Span Dragon, we got a Polluted Delta, and we got a Mana Crypt. For $30, bucks, $50, bucks, and $180, we are hoping to get $260. All right? Not bad, right? So we're hoping to get $7. We're hoping to get $260 for a grand total of $960. Now, wasn't that nice? Didn't that seem like pretty good? Here's the reality. You are not going to get that. Not even close. It is a war to the bottom when you are trying to get cash for your cards. When you're trying to get something out of this game, it is a war. It is a race to that bottom. And there are different ways in which you are selling your cards that give you pros and cons based on what version you decide to sell. Okay, like, are you going to a store? Are you, are you walking into a store today with a couple of boxes and some singles? How much are they going to give you? Are we going to an online platform? Are we go to an eBay type thing. What are the pros and cons of that? And then privately, somebody on Craigslist and a back alley deal. Pure cash only. Okay, this is where we're going. Let's start with a store. When you're dealing with an LGS, as much as I love supporting my LGS, they are always in a race against time for cash flow. It is, it is churn and burn all the time. It is a race. If you give them sealed product, so you walk in with these two boxes and you say, hey, I got two boxes here today. I got a sealed cons, 2014, got Dominaria, 2018. I need cash. What are you guys going to give me today? If you went in here in Toronto, they're going to give you about 140 bucks a box. That's it. Now, if I bought that box for $99 back then, I'm still coming out a little bit ahead with no risk. Remember, the store is just going to give you cash. So there's no risk in going to that store other than getting a low dollar amount. But they're going to pay you, okay? They're going to give you right out of the register. They're going to have you sign some stuff, proof of identification, and you're going to get that money. Good for you. But you're going to take a very low ball offer if you do it that way, okay? Because that store is you're going to crack those things and sell them as individual packs and try to just minimize their money back, sell them for like 10, 15 bucks a pack to get the actual 350 because that's what they think they can get. That's the value of that box. Or they're going to keep it sealed for a while and see if it catches somebody's eye and somebody's willing to pay full price. Remember, they're the ones who got to churn and burn it. They're accepting all the risk and they're just giving you money. But that means you are taking a very low ball offer and you're probably going to leave pretty unsatisfied. You probably feel ripped off, but that's what they can afford to do for you. Okay? They may give you 150. Remember, we're only taking cash here. This is no trade-in where they say, hey, we can we can trade some cards and work this out. No, no, you're saying, I need cash today. Okay. Now, when we're selling individual cards, you know, certain stores will give you trade-in bonuses and nope, but it's got to be cash. So, depending on how desirable the card is, we probably will come out ahead. Now, here we're looking at a total of 280, right? We just said. From the store, we're going to be 280 bucks. Wow, not a lot. But here... On singles, they're probably going to give us, if, if we're saying we want 30, let's say they give us about 19 bucks. 
They're going to give us like 35. And then they're going to give us like 110. That's not that bad, right? Come on, we, we got some cash there. We got to carry the one there. We got, we got, five, we got, we got 164. Around the 50% mark. Not bad. Remember, we didn't take trade in or anything. These are all, by the way, everything here is mint condition. Just perfectly, uh, the best of the best. Okay? Gradable. And that's what they gave us. 164 bucks. Okay. So you can see on the single side of things going to a store, depending if that store thinks they can sell those cards, they will take... They'll give you a little bit more because maybe those are cards they're looking for and they can churn those out pretty quick, especially if they are mint condition. Don't get me started if it's lightly played and stuff because you'll lose a lot of value. We're just going to say it's near mint in this case. And again, low risk, high value. Okay? In this case, you're going to get a higher value than you would for the boxes because of the cash value difference in the cards and how quick they can move them. Older product takes longer to move. Now, if we go to a platform, if we're using an eBay type deal, guess what? All you have to do on eBay is look at what everyone else is selling for, then look at all the sold listings. So you look at all the ones they're selling, and this is English, right? So we're only looking at English prices. You go, Ch -ch 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 -ch. we're assuming you have a good enough feedback that nobody thinks you're a crazy person. And let's just say they're selling for 350. Well, then you can't put yours for 350. You mark it 20% below because you want to sell it quickly. So you mark it 20% 20 below, and I always offer free shipping on mine. I will take the hit on the shipping. I make sure everything's tracked. I always record the packaging process. So if anyone questions it, no, it went in this way and here's the video and here's all my stuff put together on what you did. So you're looking at, let's just say 280 bucks a box. That is a far cry. Oh, oh, gotta get that pen right. Right, I said 280? 280, yeah, that's 560. No, 460, 560. My math is horrible. We're going to say we walk away with 560 bucks out of our 700. But guess what? We got our 560, which is great. Oh, but we have eBay fees. There's always fees. And we had the shipping costs. We just said we paid for. So you're looking at about 40 bucks in shipping costs. And we'll say 50 bucks to eBay. And we accepted the risk that somebody's not ripping us off, stealing it on their end and saying they never received it. Or saying it was fake cards or filled with cardboard crunchables or it was it was filled with Captain Crunch cereal. There is some risk involved in a platform. So if you're gonna sell on a platform, don't sell to anybody who doesn't have near perfect feedback and they gotta have a high volume of sales. You're not gonna sell somebody with 10 feedback, 20, 30, 40 feedback. Those people gotta earn their keep. You gotta look for guys in the hundreds, okay? Look for respectable people. So we're still looking around this though. So that's 90 bucks in fees. Eek. I know it sucks. So now we're down to 470, right? 470 bucks is gonna be our profit net. It's still a lot more than the 280 the store offered us. But we took a lot of the risk. We took the time and effort. We packaged it. We took it to the post office. We spent the hour waiting in line and we tracked it all the way to their door. Okay, we did all that work, not the store. So you do get a little more reward for that. Now privately, Oh, by the way, sorry, let's let's jump over here, sorry, for singles. Singles here, if this is the going rate, I still mark them 20% below, and you get the same result, okay? You still have some shipping costs. You're going to track everything. I never send anything without tracking unless it's a very minor card that I can afford to just refund the money if something goes wrong, okay? I generally only deal with pretty strong, reputable sellers and buyers, but if something goes wrong, you got to be willing to accept that and pay them back their money. No questions asked because you don't want a big fight. All right, that's name of the game when you're selling an online platform. Now, privately, let's get to that private. We're not in the army, I know. When you sell privately, be it you meet somebody at a store, you're on Craigslist, or you're, you're chilling out and a friend of a friend knows a guy who knows a guy who needs that box of cards. You can get anywhere from 80 to 90% probably of, of the value, okay? If it's something they're looking for. But there are some serious downsides. You got to make sure this is not a scam and not going to beat you up in a parking lot. You don't meet somewhere in the dark. You meet somewhere public. You meet there with a couple of your friends and you say, hey, bring a couple of, you know, we'll meet here at McDonald's. Somewhere very public. Bring a friend. Somebody who's got your back. Because if you don't know the person, there is that risk that something goes wrong. 
you make sure you don't you know have the product just flashed out wherever you're selling you keep it private you keep it down there and you make sure your friend again has got your back because i'm not taking a chance and you shouldn't either all right you're not going to a card shop you can't do stuff like that shady deals like that will get you banned from a store you're gonna have to meet somewhere else okay but it will work out most of the time i'm sure not everyone's all sketchy and shady but it can go wrong so be very, very critical of the people you're selling to. If you've never met them, it is always a public place. It is always during the daytime. Daytime. Let them verify the product. If they're buying, let's say they're buying an unlimited time vault from you, an unlimited force field, make sure that they have their own comparables to make sure that card is real. All right? Make sure because you don't want a problem when they get there and they check the card. Don't sell any fakes. Don't don't scam somebody. Do it legit, and you'll get about 80 to 90 percent of value. Now, when somebody tries to sell a collection, let's say to a YouTuber privately, but to a YouTube personality, right? Most YouTube personalities are not going to pay you more than 50 cents on the dollar cash for any card. So, if you're selling a candelabra of Thanos and you pay 1,200, you're not going to get more than six. Because again, that person's got to sit on it. And if they're not selling it and they're adding to the collection, they're not going to take the risk of all that cash leaving and paying top dollar when they can just go on a platform and buy it for top dollar instead of buying it from you. They've got to have the reward because they risked all the cash. So if you're selling to somebody on, on YouTube, expect to get 50 cents on the dollar, generally speaking, unless it's a very sought after card that they just have to have. But that most times, from what I understand, has not really happened, okay? Same with sealed product. There are a lot of the big personalities out there who are more than happy to take your product, but they've got to take it at a massive gain. So where the store is only giving you like 30% of the value of those boxes, a person selling on a, on a platform might be paying higher. A YouTube personality is going to say, hey, I'll give you 50 cents on the dollar. You want to sell me a box of, I don't know, we'll say cons again. For $350, i am going to give you $175 a box after I verify right? There's all those things going on. So be, be cautious when you're selling stuff, guys, but also be aware that you are not going to get top dollar because that's not the way it works. What they say the value is, it isn't like you can just walk into a store and get that value. That's not how it works. It's not like you're trading in for a piece of, uh, of beef. All right. You're not going in to buy diapers and it's 19.99. Okay. And every store has it for 19.99. Everyone will value your cards differently. Everyone will look at your collection differently. Everyone is out to save a buck. This is a haggle barter system and your cards, your cards are only worth what somebody is willing to pay. Remember, you're the one who needs cash. So if you're desperate to sell, you'll probably show up as being desperate and you may have to wait a long time, which means you have to take one of the other routes like a platform. If you want a low risk, low involvement and you just like, I just want to show up and sell them, you're probably going to go to a store. If you can wait a little by, you're, a little while, you're probably going to use a platform. And if you want to get top dollar, you're probably going to go the private route if you can hold on that long. But you are never going to get 100% of value. There's always something holding you back. There's always a fee. There's always a transaction problem. So the quicker you understand that, the quicker you are willing to accept the loss. I accept a minimum of 20% loss. If a box is 500, I know it's only worth 380. That's, a, that's the most I'm going to get for it. Okay, and that's if I sell it myself. I understand that going in. And I'm aware of it and I pay attention to that detail, which is why I always say the rule of double. If I paid 99 bucks for a box, I want to sell for two something, right? But if I have to undercut other people who are at the exact same price point, then I'm not making double, am I? So I don't sell it then. Okay. Cons, I would have to get 240. Okay. Which means I could sell on a platform now and get 240 bucks per box of my cons because I know they're going for 350 and everyone will see that and say it's a deal. And they'll be willing to take that, especially when you have the high feedback and stuff, right? Be aware of that stuff. A store, they like to have it. They're not going to pay you top dollar for it unless it's a super old box or something they just have to have because they already have somebody lined up to buy it if it comes in. That happens too, but they're not going to let you know that. They're not going to tell you that. I've offered to sell all kinds of boxes to stores in the past, and this has been my experience. If I don't want to take the risks on eBay, you get very low offers and just because somebody's website says they're buying it for this much doesn't mean that's the way it's going to go okay that is not how it's going to turn out for you in the end keep that in mind so when you're buying and selling here are some of the pitfalls guys pay attention to them be aware of it and again 
be willing to accept less because when you're going for cash, either you're getting out of the game or you're just going to sell some cards to churn, churn and burn some stuff out yourself just to say, hey, honey, I didn't lose all this money playing a card game. Those are some of the things you're going to have to accept pretty quickly that this is the way it goes. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you leave those down there in the comments section. I will be back to you guys whenever I can. Or, of course, you can email me if it's something private. Everyone have a fantastic day in the world of magic. That is some of the pitfalls I have gone through. I'll see you guys soon. Have a fantastic day today. And of course, a big shout out goes out to all the fantastic patrons on the channel who support this channel each and every month. You guys rock. Can't wait to see you on the upcoming live stream. Have an awesome day, everyone. Hey, there you guys are. You made it to the end of the video. Congratulations for making it this far. You guys made it through the whole video of me yammering about, yeah, there's some downsides to selling, but if you need cash, that's what you have to do. And you guys made it. It's awesome. You didn't fall into the portable hole. You didn't get swallowed by old gnaw bone or a beholder. You made it to the end of the adventure. Just like in 1983. That's wicked. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Yeah. By the way, I hope you paid attention to that background.